Hey, welcome back to One More Guitar. I got this Ibanez RG450 EXB. Um, I got a pretty good deal on this at Guitar Center. And um, so there's not a lot of reviews out there about it, so I'm gonna go over it a little bit. It isn't really a review video. Uh, I'm gonna do some upgrades to this guitar, um, and that's what the video is about. But I'm gonna go over this a little bit real quick. Um, this was a reasonably priced guitar. I think I paid around $300 for it, maybe a little less. And um, I've had it for a little bit, a um, few months, and I really like this guitar. Um, the reviews are kind of mixed about it out there. And I'll tell you what I saw that you know was kind of a pain when I got it is the setup out of the box was awful. And you know, these Floyd Rose systems are kind of a pain to set up anyway. I know a lot of people don't like them. Um, but I wanted one, and there was one for a reasonable price, so I got it. So overall, I'm going to say I'm really happy with this guitar. I love this wizard neck. I really do. Um, I saw a review where somebody said that they could feel the joint here um, on the neck where the headstock comes in, but I can't feel that at all. I've got no scuffs anywhere on the binding. Um, the tuners are kind of junk, but it doesn't really matter because it got the locking nut here. So, you know, not a big deal there. Um, I would say the bridge is probably the lowest quality piece on the guitar. Um, it's definitely some kind of knockoff, but it gets the job done. Um, I was definitely able to set it up to where it will stay in tune. You know, I really do like this guitar. Uh, the pickups, they don't sound you know, super fantastic, but, but I'm not surprised by that at the price range. So, um, really when I'm looking for a, you know, a cheaper kind of guitar, I'm kind of looking for a mod platform and I thought this guitar felt great and I knew there was going to be some stuff I was going to do to it. I really would like to replace this bridge, but I'm not going to get into that today. Um, but what I am going to replace are the pickups. I'm going to replace, uh, the pots. I'm going to put some push pulls in there. I'm going to replace the switch. And uh, I think that's it. I got a Seymour Duncan Jazz for the neck, uh, JB for the bridge, and then uh, I can't remember, I got some other Seymour Duncan. Maybe it was a quarter pound or something. I'll look um, and I'll let you know when I'm installing it what it actually is. So for the wiring, um, I want to completely redo how it's wired up. Um, there's a guy on YouTube or a group, Brasia Tone Works, and uh, they put up a lot of wiring diagrams that I think are pretty interesting and so I'm going to try one with this one that they put up. Uh, they don't actually rewire guitars, they just put up the diagrams. They put up a diagram of how to make a master volume and a master tone as well as give you a combination of having these two pickups on at the same time or all three of them on at the same time. So, And you can do the coil splitting stuff too. So I thought that sounded pretty cool. I'm going to try to make it to where this guitar can do a lot of different stuff. Um, so. I'm going to go through what the tones sound like in comparison before and after I swap the pickups out. So I'll go through that in a minute and then uh, afterwards if you want to see the process of actually replacing all of this stuff, uh, stick around and the end of the video will be me actually doing the upgrades. Alright, let's get going.
All right, well, I got the upgrades to this guitar done, and I pretty much threw the kitchen sink at this thing, so uh, I'm going to go through some of the mods now. You've already seen the tone differences compared to the Quantum pickups that came in this guitar, and those were not bad pickups, but um, to me, compared to these, they sounded really muddy, and uh, these just have a lot of top end. They're really clear. They got some bite to them. So let me go through all of the mods here and uh, talk about each one of them and what they do. Um, I've created a pretty good workhorse here, I think. Okay, so the first thing that I did was I added coil split. What it does, when you have a humbucker, you can split the humbucker to where only one of the coils is active at the time. When I pull the tone knob out, it splits this pickup and this pickup, making them effectively a single coil. So um, if you can hear the difference here, here's a humbucker sound in the neck, uh, no, in the bridge position. Okay, so you got a, that's a humbucker sound, it's really thick. So if I pull the tone knob out, something like that. But uh, anyway, you can tell how it's a much thinner sound. It sounds kind of more like a Stratocaster. So that's not that special. A lot of people do, uh, you know, split coil stuff. It's pretty easy to split the coils of a humbucker when you're wiring a guitar. Um, but it is something that's different from a lot of standard guitars, so I wanted to talk about that. Let's talk about the parts that I put into this guitar. Um, I knew I wanted to put this Seymour Duncan hot rod at a humbucker set into an 80s style guitar. So when I bought the guitar, I pretty much knew I was going to put these in there. Um, for the middle position, I wasn't really sure what to put in there, so I just stuck with Seymour Duncan and did some research, and I saw some good reviews about the quarter pound Stratocaster pickup, so I went with that. I put some CTS push-pull pots in here. I had never used these before, and um, I was worried they were going to be a little complicated, but they were pretty easy to use. Um, you just follow the diagram that's on the pot. It's pretty straightforward. Um, then I put a uh, 0 .047 orange drop cap in here. Uh, I put a CTR 5-way blade switch. Uh, this was a Made in USA switch. And then the last thing was the Burr Electronics treble bleed and volume mod. We'll take a quick look at the wiring diagram I'm using. Um, again, I got this from Brazia Tone Works on YouTube. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Um, they've really got some cool diagrams out there. They do a lot of different wiring diagrams. But the one I'm using is for a master volume and a master tone with a seven-way mod for an HSH configuration. Um, I did not see this before I got the guitar, but once I saw it, I knew I was going to try this on this guitar. So I was pretty excited to do it. So go check out their channel. Um, if you need some wiring diagram ideas, they've got plenty for you. So definitely go check them out. Thanks for sticking around. Now I'm going to show you how I uh, upgraded this.
It's got a lot of shielding, uh, which is pretty cool for such an affordable guitar. It also has full-size pots, and um, the wiring is really clean. Uh, the switch is not bad. It's really impressive. Um, I shouldn't be surprised. You know, Ibanez is known for good quality, but on such an inexpensive guitar, that's pretty impressive. They even have shielding on the pit guard there. It's not bad. Since I already have the strings off, I'm going to polish the frets and uh, go ahead and clean the fingerboard. Oh, hold on. You may want to know what I'm using. Uh, this is Frine Fret Polish. That's pretty good. It says that you can get it on the fretboard uh, just to wipe it off immediately. Uh, so you can see here that I don't have the fretboard taped up. Um, I don't recommend that. After I did it on this guitar, I did it on one more guitar and I could see it kind of getting in the pores and it was really hard to wipe out. And so I do not recommend using this stuff without taping the fretboard. And you won't see me do it again. But uh, other than that, this stuff's really good. Uh, it makes the frets really slick and shine and um, really smooth. So I do recommend it. So I just uh, repeat this process on every fret. Um, you really want to make sure that you don't leave any on there. So after I'm done, I run a rag over the entire guitar and try to make sure it's clean. Then I use this F1 oil from Music Nomad to clean the fingerboard. It doesn't take much. Just put a little drop on each fret. or I usually just run it down the middle of the fingerboard and then wipe it off. This stuff's worked pretty well for me. Just make sure you wipe off all the excess and uh, it'll get your neck pretty clean. Okay, now that we've gotten the guitar taken apart and all cleaned up, the first thing I like to do is put all of the new parts on the pit guard. Um, you can't always do this if you're just replacing one or two parts, but if you're replacing everything, this is the easiest way to do it. Um, just go ahead and mount everything directly onto the pit guard. So here I'm uh, starting to put the switch on. And after I do the switch, I'll uh, put the pots on here too. So I'm going to mount the pots to the pit guard. Oh no, they don't fit. Sometimes when you get guitars from overseas and you try to put American parts in them, uh, they don't fit because they use metric and we don't. Don't watch. Okay, how much damage was there? Ah, not too bad. All right, does it fit? All right, looks like this is going to work. You can choose to do something like this to your guitar if you want to. Um, I knew this was going to be a mod guitar, so why not use this as an opportunity to try to fix a problem? So I took a chance with it. You may not want to, but it uh, looks like it worked out for me. So just be careful if you're going to do something like this. All right, so this is the pit guard after I put the pots and the switch and the pickups in there. So now that I've got this, uh, you know, kind of mounted up here, the next thing I'm going to do is prepare everything for the wiring that needs to be done. Um, so what I like to do is pre-tin um, the pots and you know any terminals that I know I'm going to be working in. That way it makes it easier when you're actually putting the wire um, into the terminal or grounding a wire. Alright, so uh, what I'm doing here is I am putting some solder on the side of the pots. Now usually on a regular pot I would do this on the top, but because these pots have these plastic tops, you can't solder to the top of them. So I picked a spot on the side. Um, this ends up kind of biting me a little bit, 
So I want to say that when you're doing something like this, make sure you have clearance on the sides where you're putting this. Again, if this was a normal pot and you were putting it on the top, there would probably be no issue. By putting it on the side, you're actually making the pot wider and um, you may have problems fitting it into the spot where it goes. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Um, just put some solder where you know you're gonna have wires um, on the sides of the pots and on the terminals. Um, what you wanna do is you wanna put the soldering iron on the spot that you're going to put solder and then put the solder on the spot, not on the iron. Um, there's a lot of videos out there to teach you how to solder. I haven't been doing it long myself and it's really not that hard. So um, if this is something interesting to you, go check that out. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and put the ground wire on the uh, pots. I've gotta ground the tone pot to the volume pot. So I'm gonna do that here. The next thing I want to do is go ahead and install the capacitor. You want to put it in place and kind of measure because you've got way more um, wire legs than you need. So you cut that, um, make sure you've got enough space to get the wires where they need to be. Um, and then you solder one leg to a terminal on the tone pot and the other one um, to ground on the tone pot. The next step is to pre-tin the switch. Um, I didn't do this step earlier, but you need to go ahead and do this because when you wire the pickups, um, they're going to go into the switch and then later we're going to have to do some jumpers and then uh, some other jumpers from the switch to the pots to do the seven way mod. So uh, go ahead and pre-tin the switch terminals. Once the switch is ready, uh, then you can start wiring up the pickups. I start with the uh, neck pickup. I'm not going to go through every step of how to wire this. Um, you know, again, there's plenty of videos out there on how to wire guitars. Um, go do some research if this is your first time to do it. Um, it's really not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of patience. Um, for the neck and the bridge pickup, uh, you have to wire some extra wires to get the coil splitting to work. Um, for the middle pickup, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you just wire it directly to the switch and to ground. The bridge pickup is very similar to the neck pickup. Um, you wire some stuff to the switch. You wire a ground wire, actually two ground wires. And then there are two other wires that you have to connect to the um, push-pull pots. Um, I tried to get a close-up of showing you how to wire the push-pull stuff in the pots, but um, my camera really just wasn't good enough to do it. I'll have to get some better equipment at some point. But again, it's not bad and the information's out there. All right, the next thing we have to do is wire some jumpers on the switch. Uh, this is just part of the wiring diagram, so I'm following it uh, as it's written. All right, next is a seven-way mod. Um, this requires a few wires um, to run to the volume pot and to the tone pot um, from the switch. So I'm getting a lot of wires in my way at this point, and it's getting pretty complicated. So when you're doing stuff like this, you really have to be careful not to burn wires, not to pull wires out when you're heating stuff up, um, not to lay your soldering iron on something that you don't realize that it's touching. So just keep that in mind. 
Um, I'll say that this part of it was a little tricky just because of the things I just mentioned. It was really hard to get some of these wires in places, but it wasn't too bad. You just have to be careful. Another thing that was difficult about this part was these small wires that I was using. Um, I had to have small wires to get into these really tight spaces. So um, if you're going to do something like this, you may want to use alligator clips. Uh, it can be safer for you, keep your fingers from burning, and it'll make it a little easier to control the wire. I'm not sure if I actually used them here or not, but I should have. Next up is the treble bleed mod. Uh, this is a really simple modification you can do. Uh, just like the capacitor, you need to clip the legs to length, but then you just solder it into two terminals of the volume pot, and uh, that's it. Uh, it's really simple and it's really effective. I think it's a great mod, and I'm definitely going to put uh, this into some more guitars that I have. All right, the next thing we want to do is prep the ground wires uh, that are currently in the guitar. You always want to snip off any old wires that have been cut and soldered. Um, so I'm going ahead and doing that, and then I'm going to pre-tin the wires. I talked about pre-tinning the terminals and the pots earlier, but uh, one thing I didn't take the time to show you, just because this video is getting long already, is that I also pre-tin every wire that I'm using. So there's already some solder on there. Some wire comes pre tanned so if that's the case, I don't do it. But once the ground wires are ready, you can go ahead and uh, reconnect them to the pots. Um, both of these are going to ground at the volume pot. This is where I had a little trouble. One of these wires made it too thick to get the uh, pit guard back in place, so I had to fix it a few times. All right, the last thing we have to do before we put the pit guard back on is to hook up the output jack. Um, we're gonna have output going from the volume pot to the jack, and then the jack is gonna also be grounded. Okay, once we get the uh, output jack soldered, all we have left to do is to put the pit guard back on the guitar and put the knobs back on, put the cap back on the switch, and uh, string it up and see what they sound like. So now I've got the pit guard back in the guitar. I think it looks pretty good. I think these pickups look pretty good. Uh, you can see my piece of tape here. Um, if you have a Floyd Rose system and you're going to turn your guitar upside down, make sure you tape those little blocks or they fall out everywhere and you're scrambling trying to find one. So I mentioned that uh, I had a little bit of a problem with the size of things on this guitar. And as you can see here, I couldn't quite get that tone pot to seat correctly in the uh, routed area. And it's because it was a little bigger and because I had to add solder to the side of it um, that it made it not fit. But I'm going to leave it the way it is because it's kind of my mark on this guitar. I'm not perfect and now it's not either. And it'll always be a reminder to me to uh, check that kind of stuff. So um, I think it'll be fine. So uh, let's listen to it one more time.
So um, I hope you liked the video. Uh, I think that this is a pretty cool project. I love guitar as a hobby because I love to play and I love to talk about music and you know learn music and all that stuff. But I also love it because I love the working projects out of it. This guitar, when I bought it, I knew I was going to fix it up. I wanted something that was the kind of 80s uh, metal style of guitar. I wanted something Floyd Rose, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it because, you know, this is not really the type of music I play a lot. I just wanted to have some fun with it. Upgrading guitars is really fun, and um, if you're going to keep a guitar and want to try some stuff out and want to learn a different aspect of this whole hobby, uh, I definitely recommend getting into it. It's a lot of fun. All right. Well, I appreciate you watching the video. I hope you learned some stuff. Uh, you know, if you're interested, definitely try it out yourself. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to know when I put out new videos. Other than that, I'll see you next time. Take it easy and keep playing.